Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I have four rosés here, uh, all Coderone, uh, all 2014, apart from the last one, which is 2013. Um, not sure what is going to be the difference between them. They should pretty much all be based on Grenache. This one says, uh, well, I'll better tell you what it is. Domaine saint Gaillard. 2014 Cote d'Iron, Lea and Lea. I don't know what Lea and Lea are, whether they're people. A Grenache, Sanso and Carignan, um, weighing in at 13 alcohol. Give it a whirl. It smells simple. Um, I have to say it doesn't smell of an awful amount. Um, a bit of apple in there, a uh, vague little bit of strawberry, but one of those I imagine if I hadn't known it was pink, I would have probably thought it was a white wine, but uh, anyway, better try it. Okay, bright, breezy, um, one of those where you've come up with the excuses. Sitting outside on a terrace on a sunny day, you could drink an awful lot of that. I think you could, but I don't know how much of an impression it would make on your uh, sensibilities. Probably affect your ability to drive, but uh, yes, it's not. It's, it, it's okay. It's, it's all right. Um, not jumping up and down for it. I would finish a glass and uh, then I might ask if there was something else uh, for... Uh, the next glass. Let's see whether the next one um, is uh, any improvement. Oh, no, it was okay. Uh, the next three, I think, are all 13.5% alcohol. This one is La Grivelière uh, from Père Anselm. Um, Côte du Rhône, nothing on the back label as to what it's made from. But uh, as with the previous one, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, uh, Grenache is a major component. One thing I do notice is it's a slightly paler colour. Um, and uh, the other one maybe a little bit more orange, this one, yeah, just slightly more uh, to the pale, uh, very, very light salmon pink. This is one that uh, you, smell, you smell the cool fermentation. They've done, uh, it, it smells of bubble gum. It smells like it's going to be a young, simple wine. Bit of spice, bit of peach. Um, feels like, I, actually, I notice it's only half a percent alcohol. I do notice a little bit more flesh in the mouth than the, the previous one. Um, maybe this one uh, could take on slightly heartier food than the first one. The first one's a sip in the sunshine. This one, uh, yeah, has that little bit of weight and uh, what I call the Provence-like sandy character. So a little bit more character. Not sure which I prefer. They're, they're, neither of them is, uh, is, is bad, but uh, neither of them has me jumping up and down going. Wine number three. Um, again, still 2014, Clos Belen, uh, Altitude, Mise en Bouteille, au Clos. Uh, now, uh, blah, 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 beehives, 410 metres. Uh, again, doesn't say what it's made from, but probably much the same blend. Uh, give it a whirl. Again, not leaping out of the glass and saying, hello. It's um, It's got a little bit of uh, more spice, maybe some of that sandy character I was getting in the uh, in the previous one. Um, but um, not a huge amount. Come to taste it, and there's a bit more weight and a bit more flesh. So it's almost like it's got the weight and flesh of the, the previous one. And a um, little bit of peach in there, um, some spice. Um, yeah, there's more, more of an exotic side to that. I, I think that, that, that's my favourite so far. It does have a little bit to say for itself. And... Um, hmm. Yeah, there's a, a floral, almost like a hawthorn type of character to coming through on, on the finish. Um, I, I quite like that. Mm, yeah, fair enough wine. Let's try the final one. Um, so this is the only 2013 here. Um, again, doesn't say what it's made from, but this is Gigal um, Cote de Rhone Rosé. I mean, Gigal's Cote de Rhone Red is one of the those, uh, if you're in a... If you're in a, a restaurant in France and don't recognise too much, uh, that you'll often find it on the on, on the list, and it's a, it's a reasonable bet every time. Let's see whether the rosé is the same. Definitely some red fruit character coming through here. Uh, rose hip syrup. It smells like it's going to be a, a richer, fuller, headier wine. I mean, it's, it's I think it's thirteen and a half percent, like like all the rest of them have said. But maybe it's that extra year that has rounded out the fruit flavours and getting away from that uh, slightly vague apple into uh, something a little bit more slightly stewed red berries and this rose hip. It's the deepest in colour and it's also the deepest in flavour. This slight edge of strawberry cordial. It's a style of wine that uh, isn't as fashionable now as uh, some of the, the paler uh, wines, but um, 
God, it's got more flavour than quite a lot of the, those pale, wan, uh, yeah, waif-like rosés. Um, so there's the juiciness. That's, that's the sort of thing I want to have at a barbecue because it's got enough weight of fruit. It's got enough alcohol to uh, carry the flavours. Um, and it's got freshness with it, um, which is what you want with barbecued food. You want something to cut through fat. You want something that's got a bit of personality to take on the uh, uh, the charring. And... Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's looking quite nice, that. I mean, not great, but um, uh, that's the one I would definitely, if it weren't a, a rather grotty day in the north of England, uh, I would be herring outside, lighting the barbecue, and quaffing rather a lot of that. See you soon.